Okay, today I'm going to talk about the tracks. These tracks are just wood. It's a two by four and a two by two end connector with just a quarter inch by three inch long lag bolt holding it all together. And it works just fine. It's strong enough for a pedal powered tank, but it is not going to hold up to a 12 and a half horsepower. So I'm going to have to come up with something different. So a little history sidebar, right after World War II, the United States had a requirement to put a 90 millimeter anti-tank gun on as light a vehicle as possible so that it could be airdropped. So in 1950, Cadillac made the first prototypes of what would become the M56 Scorpion. Now this vehicle only weighed eight tons, so you can see when it fired, the recoil of the gun almost lifted the whole vehicle off the ground. In fact, the crew of four, three of them were supposed to dismount the vehicle when they fired it for their own safety. And you can see here the gunner is even turned to the side so he doesn't get punched in the face by the optics. So, eight ton vehicle uh, is light by uh, compared to a tank, but it's still a lot of weight. And um, it had to, the tracks had to be able to survive the impact of that vehicle getting picked up and slammed back down again. So when you take a look, close look at the tracks, what they did, one of the things they did to save weight was they made the tracks out of two rubber belts. And then there's a steel channel that goes across the, uh, across the center. So you got two belts and some steel channels, and it was able to survive the impact. It was had a good service life. It was durable. And so um, that's just kind of the basic idea of what I'm going to do with the uh, next version of the tracks for the uh, Sherman scale tank here. So I got this uh, used conveyor belt on eBay for I think 75 bucks plus 40 bucks shipping. And uh, I can cut this down into two seven inch wide strips and it'll be long enough to get both the tracks made. And should have a braking strength of around 4,000 pounds so it should be plenty strong for what we're doing here. So like I said, I'll cut that down seven inches wide which matches the width of these um, track links. And then I'll I'll take, I'll take this all apart, I'll take the guides off, and then I'll lay the belt on top of the links, drill holes obviously, and, and uh, bolt the guides on top of the belt, and clamp the belt in between the, the link and the track guides, and that way the um, belt will take all of the tension, and uh, but it won't make contact with the ground, because the concrete would chew that rubber belt up, so... All these track links I already made will still be reused for uh, absorbing the punishment from the concrete or whatever we're driving on. I can still reuse my drive sprockets here. You can see I got those adapted to the uh, lawn tractor wheels. And then the end connectors here, instead of them being uh, a moving part on the end, I'll take those off and uh, bolt them onto the end of each link and uh, they'll just be used to engage in the drive sprocket, but they won't be a moving part, so they won't be under the same stresses. So that's my plan. So now I got to get to work disassembling all this, but this way I can reuse everything I've already made here with all these track links, the drive sprockets, and uh, save myself a lot of time reworking all this. Okay, I got the track all disassembled to get today. There are the 138 links and 138 uh, chevron shaped treads, plastic treads. And here we got the uh, 276 end connectors and 552 lag bolts, 276 track guides and 276 screws that held that all together. So now I gotta put it back together with the belt. Okay, one track is back together. Uh, the chevrons aren't nailed back on yet, of course, as you can see by the paint, but uh, here's what it looks like. I had to, uh, the pitch is a little different because before it used to pivot here, and now it pivots down here where the belt is. So because the pivot is in a different location, I had to actually make a shorter pitch. Um, because when the track straightens out, the links pinch closer together. So I had to add five links so now I don't have enough links to do the other side. So I'll have to build the other 10, uh, 10 links to finish the other side, but anyway. Um, and then of course the other track, I could break it anywhere I want. On this one I can't, so I had to make one master link. So this one, you can see there's two layers of belt. So it, the belt 
starts down here underneath and goes all the way around and ends here. And I got four bolts clamping that together through the two end connectors and then two down there in the bottom. And then uh, I wrap it all the way around here. There's my, uh, there's four T-nuts inside that master link so that uh, it's serviceable. The other ones are wood screws because they'll go together once and stay there, but that one I'll have to take off once in a while. So I used uh, metal threads so that it's reusable. But uh, there we go. I think, I think that'll do it. I've got to adjust the track tension, of course, but this is coming back off so I can attach all the uh, chevrons. So then I'll make 10 more links and build the other side. Thanks for watching.